I want to solve this differential equation using the shooting method. And I mean, it's not a terribly difficult differential equation to solve, but I want to do it this numerical method with Python uh, called the shooting method because we use the shooting method in other situations too. So, so we're gonna solve this equation. Let's start off with the equation. So we have y double prime plus two y equals zero. I just found it somewhere. And then we have the boundary conditions that y at zero, at, and this is uh, x, x is equal to zero is one, and y at x equals uh, pi is zero. So first of all, we have this, we're gonna use y prime is the derivative of y with respect to x, and then y double prime is the derivative of y prime with respect to x, or the second derivative of y with respect to x. That's just the notation that we normally use, it's not a big deal. Okay, how do we solve this numerically? The first thing we're gonna do is solve for y double prime. So I'm gonna take this equation right here and say y double prime is negative two y. I just added two y to both sides. Now, we are going to use the Euler method. The Euler method, uh, which there's a bunch of them, the Euler method can solve differential equations by breaking them into parts. So I'm gonna break this into step sizes. Delta x equals 0 0.01. I just picked a number. Now imagine during these steps I have, I have y, y prime, y double prime at all these different intervals. So here's my, here's y, let's just look at y. Here's y. Uh, as a function of x. So I have a y there, I have a y there, I have a y there, and these are all separated by delta x, and I don't even know what they are. So let's call this y1, y2, y3, y4. So, but the thing is that if I know y1, and I know this delta x, I can actually find the next y2. And I can do that by first assuming assuming that y double prime is constant over that time, that space interval. So going from here to there, I'm gonna assume that y double prime is constant, which it totally is not, right? Right up here it says it changes, but we're gonna assume that it's constant. If that's the case, then uh, I can write the second derivative of y, y double prime as delta y prime over delta x. I'm gonna write it as a finite difference, right? Because if I have uh, points, and these could be y primes too, then this is just the, if y double prime is constant, then we can just write that as a slope. And I can write this as y two prime minus y one prime over delta x. So this is the, the y prime at the beginning of that space interval, and then that's at the end. And that's just, I'm writing the change in as just a change. I can take this and solve for y2 prime. y2 prime is equal to y1 prime plus y double prime delta x. That's kind of important. Now, just to think back, if you've done any physics problems, we do the same thing in physics, right? Except that we break this into time intervals, delta t, and this would be the acceleration, and this is the velocity. So this is the velocity update formula, but I'm doing it in um, as a space derivative just to show you that it can be different. But again, this would allow me to find all the y, the y primes in the future if I know how y changes. So I actually have to do more than just say that, right? Because uh, this is an important step right there. So y, when I go to the next interval, y double prime changes because y changes. But I haven't found out how y changes. So let's write this down. Let's look at uh, the next assumption. Let me write down my two things. Uh, y double prime is negative two y and y two prime, y one prime, plus y double prime delta x. That's what I had. Okay, now my focus, focus, there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm having camera issues, that's for sure. Okay, so now I can assume, I'm trying not to get the focus off. See, there we go. Assume that, uh, I'll write down lower. I'm gonna fix this camera later. I wish it wouldn't do that. I think, I wonder if there's a way. Okay, um, let's assume that Y prime is constant. 
If that's the case, I can say y prime is delta y over delta x, or y2 minus y1 over delta x. And now I can solve this for y2, and I get y2 equals y1 plus y prime delta x. Now, step one, step two, step three. So now I have my numerical model, right? Because I can calculate the second derivative at the beginning of a time inter a space interval. I can use that to update the y prime, and then I can update y. And so this is actually, if I do it in this order, that would technically be that y2 prime. I just calculate it right there. But now I can, once I have y2, I can go up back up here for the next space interval and find the new y double prime, and then find the new y prime, find the new y, and it's just a big loop. Now, you know, and this is just like finding the position, and that's the velocity with time. That's what you do in physics. But if I do that, you know, I'm, I'm taking my initial value right here, and I'm finding the next one, and then I'm finding the next one, and then I'm finding the next one, and then I'm finding the next one, and I'm finding the next one. And that's a problem because right here, there's two problems. Number one, I need y1 prime. I need to know the initial derivative, right? I can't update y2 if I don't know that. And I don't know that, right? I know my initial y from the boundary conditions. That's one of the boundary conditions. But I don't know that. Number two, y of pi equals zero. Was that my boundary condition? Yes. So what if I end up up here? Well, that's not right, you know. But I can't know where I'm going to end up because I'm doing it one at a time. I'm doing them in sequence. And this is where the shooting method comes in. So what we're going to do is to pick a value for y1 prime and run our Euler formula and find where we end up. And if it's not at the right boundary conditions, then we're going to change that and we're going to do it again. And that's why it's called a shooting method. So imagine that I have like that and it's not right, so I do it again. It's like that. I do it and it's not right. I do it again and I'm like that. I keep changing it until I do get it right. It's like throwing a basketball at a goal and you miss your short, so you shoot a little bit further and you shoot a little bit further and you shoot a little bit further. Okay, so let's do this in Python because if I want to break this into 0 0.01 steps going from 0 to pi, that's a bunch of calculations to do all this that many times. I don't want to do that. Okay. You don't want to do that either, right? Nobody really wants to do all that. Okay, so here we are in Python. I'm going to give you the link to this code uh, once we get done. The first thing I need to do is we're going to make some graphs. So let's make a graph. Uh, G1 equals graph. X title equals X. Y title equals Y. And I'm using WebVPython. So in WebVPython, one, it's online, so that's really great. Two, it has really nice graphing. It's really simple. It's simple to use. I can share code. It's not... The, you know, your normal uh, high-end Python, and that's fine, uh, with 400, 450 height equals 250, that's fine. And then F1 equals G curve. So this is just for making a graph. You don't really need to know this. You don't even need the graph. Um, color equals color dot blue. I like blue. <clears throat> um, and if you have questions about graphing, just let me know. I'll be happy to help. Uh, oops, I don't want to do that. So now I need to start with my initial value. So I need my value for y, y equals 1. I need my value for the derivative of y, which I'm going to guess. I'm going to call that yp for y prime, and that's also 1. I'm picking a value, right? Uh, now I need my value of x, 0, and I need my step size, my delta x, which I'll call dx, 0 0.01. Uh, that's that. Okay. Now I'm just going to run the calculation. I'm going to go from x equals 0 to pi, and I'm going to update y double prime. I'm going to update y prime. I'm going to update y, and then we'll see where we get, and we'll plot the whole thing. So while x is less than pi, do the following. Number one, calculate y double prime. I'm going to call that ypp, and it's negative 2 times y. Right? That's my differential equation right there. That was it. And I have a value for y, so I can calculate y double prime. Now, I don't need all these indices. I don't need to say y double prime 2, y double prime 1. I don't need all that stuff because in Python, I'm just going to change the value. So I don't need to keep track of all the values. You can, but you don't need to. Okay, oops. Now, after that, I'm going to use y double prime to update y prime. So y prime equals y prime 
plus y double prime times dx. And again here, this is like the old y prime and this is the new one. Because in Python, this is a make equal to sign, right? It says take whatever that value, all that stuff on the right, and set it equal to this, this variable over here. And so we change it. So we don't have to worry about the indices. Now I can update y, y equals y plus uh, y prime times dx. And now I can update x. So I need to move to the next x too. x equals x plus dx. And finally, I want to plot the whole thing. So let's say f1.plot xy. Uh, and then finally, when I get done with that whole loop, I'm going to print out my final value of y, because I want to check that in that, that condition. Uh, print uh, y of pi equals, because that is the final value, y. And let's run it and see what happens. There we go. Okay, so there's my differential equation. I started up here. That's my initial value, right? Y starts at 1, so that does work. And then it's going up because I told the slope to do that. Uh, but you see right here, my final value is negative 0.93. It's not 0. I want it to be 0. My oh, I'll show the whole thing. So that is the end of the graph right there. That's the end of the graph. No, it's not the end of the graph right there. Okay, let me make my graph a little bit smaller um, with a 400 and then height of 200. Let's see if that fits. There, that fits. Okay. So it doesn't meet. I want to come up here. Right, I want it to be up here. So what we could do, and remember, we're at negative 0.93. So let's just change the slope. Now, the other thing that I like to, to emphasize in, in programming is that we're programming to learn. We're programming to, to understand what's going on. We're not programmed to mo make the most uh, elegant code. And so what I'm doing right now, if you're a programmer, you'd say that's stupid. You shouldn't do it that way. But it, it kind of can make sense too. Okay. So I'm going to change this. Let's put this y prime. That's the one I don't know. I don't know what that value is. So I'm going to change it to 1.5. And let's run it again and see what happens. And you see, now I'm at negative 1.27. So I'm actually further down lower. So I increased my slope and I went down. Well, maybe I should decrease my slope. Let's say uh, 0 0.5. And I'm going to run it. Now I'm closer to my value of zero, so it looks like I need to just keep on decreasing it. Let's say uh, 0 0.2. This is totally fine, just so you know. This is totally fine. You can keep changing stuff like this. It's no big deal. Now I'm at negative 0.38, still not there. Let's just try zero. Okay, getting closer. I'm looking for this to be zero. Um, now let's go to... Um, negative 0.3 and getting closer uh, negative 0.35 okay so now here I'm at negative 8.75 times 10 to the negative third and it looks pretty good it's pretty close you could play around with that final value as much as you want but it's not you don't really need to do that I mean this is just for proof of concept but you notice that I've adjusted that slope over here until I got where I wanted over there. And that's why it's called the shooting method. Now, very important point here. I don't have a function. I didn't get uh, a cosine kx plus b cosine kx, which would be a solution you could solve for a and b with the boundary conditions. And that's what you do in quantum mechanics. I don't have that function. I have data points, right? I just have x, y, x, y, x, y. I have all these. I just have data. And so sometimes you might need the function. Sometimes the data is good enough. But here I only have the data. I just have data. Okay. So that's one of the downsides here. Um, but there you did it. You solved the numerical. You solved the differential equation with the shooting method. So that's, that's a good job. Now, let's just make it a little bit better. Um, one that, Just for fun. You don't have to do this. If you're like, I just wanted to solve that problem, that's fine. Oh, I should say... This is important. You can put pretty much any differential equation in there. Um, as long as you can solve for y double prime, then the rest of the steps are the same. So if I had a different differential equation, just put that in there. If I have different boundary conditions, if I have a uh, different initial value for y, I'd put that right there. If I have a different final value, that's just what I'm checking over there. So you can change this to, to pretty much solve any differential equation. Not everyone, because... If it's complex, you might have to do some tricks, so, but you get the idea. Let's make an animation of this as, it, as the function shoots, just for fun. Okay. 
So what he, I'm going to be changing, let's put this back at one and run it. And remember, let's just use a little trick. We're not going to do the best animation. But if I know that I'm too low and I need to get up higher, that's what I'm going to use to end my loop. Okay. So I want to change this value of y prime. So let's make up a value about how much I change it. I'm going to call it dyp equals 0 0.01. That's how much I'm going to change my slope by. And I'm going to rerun the whole thing. Uh, I have that. Um, I have, let's put this y final as negative 1.5. And it just needs to be something that I know is negative, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep running my loop until y final is not zero anymore. Uh, I also need this. I'm going to use this yp start equals one. That's my starting value of yp. And I'm going to change that value. I'm going to see if I need to change that value each time. And again, there's better ways to do this, but you know we want to do it the way that we that we understand in our head. That's the most important thing. While y final is less than zero. That's my bigger loop. I'm going to keep changing my slope until y final is not less than zero. Then it will switch and be positive. And then at that point, it got really close to zero. So rate 100 just tells Python, if I'm going to make an animated graph, to only do 100 loops per second. So this will take, if I want to, you know, and we can change that value. So the higher the rate, the faster the thing runs. So we can change how fast the animation runs. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is reset x and reset y, right? Because those are my constants. But once I get through the end of the loop, I'm going to go back over and start it again. I need to go back to my initial values. Uh, and then I'm going to put right here, my initial value for yp is yp start. And then I need this f data equals empty list. So f data is my, uh, it's going to be a list of values that I can use to plot. Uh, that's that. So now I'm going to do this loop, but I want to do it indented. So I want it to be part of this other loop. And I'm not going to do this F1 plot. I'll say F data equals F data plus oops, XY. So I'm going to add that value to my data list, and then I can do that. Um, OK. So that everything else is the same. And then what I'm going to do after the end of the loop, that little interior loop, I'm going to change my initial uh, yp start. That's my y prime start value. I'm going to decrease it yp start minus dyp, right? I'm going to decrease my value of my slope because I know that's the way I had to go. So again, I'm trying to cheat. And then I'm going to say, okay, what's my final y? It may not be different, but I'm going to check. If y is greater than y final, then I'm going to make y final equal to y. Right, so I'm going to change my y final if I'm getting closer to where I need to be. Uh, and now I need to print f or plot f1.data equals f data. That's going to make the animated graphs. Animated graphs are super easy in Python, um, in WebVPython, and I love that. Okay, I think that should work. Let's just run this thing. And it didn't work can't find dpy because I don't have dpy, I have dyp. And I'm dumb. dyp. If that's the only error made, then that's a pretty good error, right? Because you're going to make errors. There you go. Animated. And it stopped. And there you go. So there's an animated version of that shooting method. And that's just for fun. You don't need that. But I'd like to do that. So I am going to save this. Uh, oops. I'll save this and give you a link to the code down below. And that's that. So if you need this for quantum mechanics, that's what you go for. And I have, I've done this before, but you know, I wanted just a shooting method instead of a whole bunch of other stuff. Hope that helps. Talk to you later.